This episode of Bonfireside Chat is brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com forward slash duckfeedtv and all the other shows in the network. Uh, for fans of this show, especially this season that has these kind of one-off things, recommend watch out for Fireballs. Give it a shot. It is a uh, games club podcast, kind of game by game. The same kind of uh, classic Gary and Cole approach. I don't know what that uh, that voice was, but the same kind of uh, classic Gary and Cole approach. But uh you know, given to uh, games that aren't uh, Dark Souls adjacent, even though we did do Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is certainly Salt and Sanctuary adjacent. Check it out. Thanks. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Bonfire Side Chat. It is a sanctuary city. <laughs> um, <laughs> not for long. Um, yeah, not for, uh, not for long. Jeez. Um, uh, yeah, uh, duckfeed.tv slash store, diggity duck bundle. Um, yes. But, <laughs> yeah. sure. uh, but this week we are continuing continuing our discussion of Salt and Sanctuary. Uh, last episode, last week, we uh, discussed the generalities and we talked up through the Village of Smiles. And I see no reason why we should not uh, jump straight into uh, talking about this next place, the Watching Woods. Go back and listen to that first episode. Otherwise, this will be baffling. Yeah, yeah. Got to uh, got to got to get that context. We talk about all the generalities and stuff. So that's where we we get this. We we always make that disclaimer, but I don't know anybody who's jumping into the two towers, you know? <sighs> yeah, without, it's, uh, it, it happens. <laughs> no. Well, well, uh, they should not. Yeah. Um, no, you know, no offense to them. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, we get here through this kind of long, dark staircase behind the Queen of Smiles. Um, good we sentences. Run into a, Let's put yeah, that in the book of good sentences. <laughs> <laughs> um, we run into an NPC here for a thing that doesn't pay off in forever yeah. and pays off in, in a way that is underwhelming. And, and I don't know why this is here. <laughs> There's like an NPC that's like, hey, if you happen to come across a bag of earth. Um, you have to give them a bag of earth and you get some like upgrade materials for it. Yeah. But you don't get that bag of earth until like the last third of the game. Yeah. Like 80% through the game. And then you just have to go back here and get this. Like, do you think this was maybe going to be more relevant or more kind of important at some point? I don't know. Like, this yeah. is very strange to me. I couldn't guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah it could. It, it just wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> it's not It's not like an important or cool NPC. They just say, hey, have you seen a bag of earth? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, there's um, there's, 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 there's a lot around. of earth. Like, do you and, need a bag? Yeah, you can like, probably find a bag. You, I mean, you could just k- kill one of those big guys and use his stomach as an Arasat's bladder for all yeah, of the, the earth that you need. Half these people have sacks on their head, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty silly. Yeah. Um, and then you you head actually down to the uh, the actual woods, the watching woods. Yes. Um, this is uh, our first strictly kind of like platforming challenge level. The woods itself, it's mostly an Ewok village of uh, these small mm-hmm. platforms. Uh, where you're being harried by these by these uh, archers called vile hawks who are uh, shooting at you with poisoned arrows. Yes. Yeah. And they kind of do these like acrobatic flips to new areas, shoot, flip to another area, shoot. Yeah. And uh, they'll kind of come from other areas. This whole uh, this or come from different angles. This whole area is about kind of threats from all angles yes. because uh, this area is rich in those bats yeah. as well. And yeah. skull bats. Yep. And <laughs> notice this has blight town tendencies. This is not the blight town. <laughs> no, no, we'll get to This game has multiple blight towns. <laughs> um, one of the most annoying enemies I think in this game is this, uh, this poison blob. Thing. Ooh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's almost always hidden behind background clutter. Um, well, a lot of times, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just hidden behind the fact that it's desaturated. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of times they're just on the tree. And if you look for them, they're there. But they just happen to be the same kind of there's no contrast between them and the background. Yeah. They they function almost exactly like the uh, the, the the blobs in uh, Dark Souls. Right. Yes. They'll drop on you. You know, they hold you for a while. These ones have the added annoyance of poisoning you. But um, otherwise, they function the same. It's just one of those things that, you know, that delay for some reason feels worse in a 2d game. Yeah. Yeah. And they have kind of a, a a grab attack thing they can do from the ground. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're not only they're tanky the same way that the, the souls ones are, 
um, you know, when you're trying to hit them, trying to kill them before they get on you. But they just grab attack, which you can you just rip them off of your head. <laughs> so you, if they grab attack you, they die like a bee. But you you will get poisoned then. Yeah. Um, so and poison is not as big a deal. You know, it's not an absolute death sentence. You can live with poison for a little while. But, uh, you know, in general terms, and you, you don't really have like a lot of uh, antidotes at this point either. No, uh, it's pretty annoying. Um, there are also, uh, this introduces the bloated monstrosities, which are similar to like the, uh, the brick brutes, um, yes. or any number of, uh, like even the ogres from blight town, you know, uh, they come at you, they have these gigantic maces, um, and they're spaced around like mini bosses. Like the one here that you find is right below the main boss of this area. Yeah. It's, um, they also breathe poison on you, which is their, their like main attack. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the main thing about these, uh, these kind of guys is that they, this is the first enemy where I if you're not right up next to them when you try to roll, I couldn't roll through them. Yeah, that's the one. They're a little wide. And that was pretty obnoxious because they place one right before the first sanctuary in this area that happens to just be right next to the boss. And mm -hmm. um, this is a really short area. Yeah. Actually, like it's kind of dense um, and you can kind of you can have some fun kind of platforming. They do a cool way of hiding secrets that you couldn't do in a, a Souls game, which is have platforms hidden behind leaves. Mm -hmm. So um, some places, if you just jump, you'll happen to grab up onto a... Uh, onto a ledge yeah you know and uh that, that's pretty cool so it's fun to kind of sweep this area for for treasure mm -hmm. once you kind of get done with that and you're ready to move on and you're doing that without having a, a sanctuary there's not a sanctuary on the left side of the, the map kind of right um you get to the end they put this kind of big you know fuck off enemy that you might have trouble rolling through right before the the sanctuary yeah uh, which i think is kind of kind of a fuck you yeah it um, feels like kind of a bummer and combining this guy with the strong attack which will knock you halfway across the map doesn't play very well with the geometry of this level which is mostly open air so like when i've died to this thing it's because he knocked me across you know like not yeah. knocked me off of it as opposed to I, as opposed to the poison yeah i've died to the poison breath as well he has a big wind up for it but mm -hmm. Um, the reason why I died is because I tried to roll through him, couldn't get through. Yeah. And then you just kind of go back to <laughs> your side of it. Yeah. Um, I, I have a story about these. I don't know if it's funny, but it's definitely frustrating. Uh, when I was at my darkest depths of this and I was like, okay, well, I need to get the Drake sword because I, I'm not doing any damage to these bosses. Um, I, you know, figured, well, okay, I've got to get the Amber Idol. This is one of the only enemies in this part of the game before you get to Hager's Cavern or the uh, the, the Dome of... The, the Dome of the Forgotten, where you can actually get uh, one of these to drop. So I killed the I killed this guy 127 times mm -hmm. um, trying That's to get a lot. Yep, that is a lot yeah. trying to get it to drop. Um, and then nothing. I was like, well, fuck it. I've wasted an afternoon doing this. I regret every choice I've ever made in my life. I'll just go do something else. Um, and then when I was coming back through here for some kind of thing, I was like, okay, I'm going to kill this. And I know that the first one that I kill is going to drop the Amber Idol. Guess what? Oh yeah. <laughs> if, if, you. Uh, yeah. Never, never farm. Yeah, I know. I, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's totally a mistake. It's like a funny I, it's, story. It's a sad story. Yeah. I, I, I understand. I know, I know it's it was bad, but like, like it felt like the only option that I had at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had spent maybe even more time going up against uh, the the boss that was giving me trouble. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I get that. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah, it's frustrating. Like those kind of drop rates, you know, that pink tail problem. Yeah. Is uh is is annoying. Yeah. So I've killed a lot of this guy, and the only reason I know the number is because each sanctuary uh, counts the number of times that you rest at it. Yeah. Yep. yep. Blah. Boy. Um. So you you know you, you can avoid him. Um. You know, if you have a good enough roll speed, mm -hmm. you can get through him. Otherwise, um, and you go there and the, there's your sanctuary right there. That's going to be your boss run. Um, you head up. Um, there's there's just a blob and this guy and you get right to the boss. So, again, this is a relatively short area. Yeah. Um, the Mad Alchemist. Yeah. This is a good fight. I, I think it's OK. Yeah. I, I, I don't love it. I don't think it's bad. Yeah. But I, I, th I think it is merely OK. Yes. Uh, this guy uh, was once known as Ruzpin Grand Tear of Alchemy and Solves. <laughs> so, Ruzpin. Um, <laughs> Ruzpin. Souls, you know, but everything is named worse. Yeah, Teddy, um, Teddy Ruzpin. Yeah, yeah, Teddy Ruzpin. Um, <laughs> so this guy doesn't have, he's a, you know, a kind of a, a wide guy in a Plague Doctor <laughs> outfit. Um, he doesn't have any melee attacks, right. which is a good thing to know. Uh, is kind of the big deal here is that you can get right next to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the way he kind of works is he uh, throws these little pots around. It's a little bit like the Plague Knight fight yeah. in uh, in Chivalry. 
um, that have various effects. So they will either like spawn one of these blob guys. Um, they'll spawn axes, which I don't, I don't know why he's got, mm. you know, that's an alchemy thing. That seems silly <laughs> to me. Um, and then most devastatingly, this lightning attack, Yes. uh, that he can kind of set up these, uh, these clouds that will, you know, rain lightning down on you that just, uh, do in tremendous damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the reason I like this is strictly because it didn't feel like a soul's fight to me. It felt like a more of a Castlevania thing. Um, specifically because he does hover around the edge. He is throwing out these various effects like this. This was busy in a way that like really played up the fun. And I mean, like maybe, maybe it's just because the boss run was so short. It didn't feel bad when I died to him once or twice, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I, I, I liked, I liked the fact that he was fighting with these potions and just, he had that wide variety of stuff. He was, he was kind of like spamming you with. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's not bad. It yeah. just it and it, you're right. It doesn't feel like a, a Souls fight. It does. It has these it has those two kind of platforms. Yeah. Uh, next to him, which you know are uh, you know yeah. make this uh, kind of have a little bit more dimension. Yeah, he's got those ro robotic walks. Yeah, yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, that's a that that's him. It, it's a it's pretty middle of the road for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is uh, yeah, doesn't it falls pretty quick. Yeah. Um. um and this gets you into the sunken keep, uh, which kind of transitions. There's not an awful lot of difference between. Is, Go ahead. Is the um, the sanctuary nearby? Is that the one that has? I think that's a new new covenant. I think the sanctuary mm. nearby is one of the stone roots. Maybe. Yeah. So there's uh, that's another another creed. It's the poison archers, essentially. Yeah. yeah. The kind of a uh, distance. Just worth mentioning that if you wanted to go for an archery build, um, this is when you're going to get your first first chance to do so. Yeah. And these are guys who worship poison. Yes, worship poison and kind of nature. And the yeah. uh, the guys who are the archers that have been harrying you this whole time, I think are are members of this covenant as yeah, well. Like paragons uh, of it. Yeah, yeah. They still they still shoot you. Yeah, of course, whether you join the covenant or not. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so the sunken keep is not very different uh, compared to the, uh, the 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 watching woods. There's very little transition between the two of them. The biggest difference is the introduction of these wretch feeders. Uh, they're kraken, but they're indistinguishable from xenomorphs. And they just look I, like xenomorphs. Yeah, I I hate these things so much. They suck really bad. They yeah. have a um a leap kind of grab attack, uh thing that uh is very difficult to counter once they've done it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you see it coming, it's not right. You know, so you can kind of uh you know dodge through, but they just kind of jump on you, and they can chain do it. Mm -hmm. Um, if one of them has you on the ground, you can get hit while on the like before your animation to get up starts. Yeah. Um, and getting hit on the ground is a uh, major pet peeve for me and is something this game indulges in gleefully. Yep. Um, it becomes a real problem during certain boss fights, but here it happens as well. Yep. Because um, these things, again, will just rocks bury you. Yeah. To death. And uh, being rocks buried by these guys sucks. Mm -hmm. um, they're also just xenomorphs. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, please stop it. Yeah. Video games like it's <laughs> it's it's very transparent. I love Alien. Uh -huh. And like, I love aliens, but you have to quit this. <laughs> like the other thing about these guys is they will climb down from the background or they, you yeah. know, they will, they will kind of emerge from thin air climbing down columns. So it's very, uh, it's very possible to just have some spawn behind you and then you're surrounded right away. Like yeah. if you do not memorize where they're going to come out and attack them as they are becoming visible. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, <sighs> weirdly enough. So the, um, if you just kind of head to the uh, this and this is just a castle with platforms and stuff, there's not a whole lot to visually distinguish this area. I feel like at right. least not for this part of it. And the outside of it is just, you know, gray, gray stone and mm. and ladders and, and stairs. Um, if you head kind of to the uh, lower left kind of portion of it, you could run into another boss fight, like more or less right away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And this is the uh, the Kraken Cyclops. This is the largest enemy that we fought so far. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, again, this is an enemy that is just a little bit too big to roll through. Um, and even, even if you did try a thing that was kind of annoying to me is that his most common attack involves, uh, it's like, a, it's, it's a big sweep, but he drags his blade along the ground so that even if you try to roll through it, your iframes are not long enough to, uh, to, you know, get you through unscathed. Yeah. Yeah. And you you can roll through him if you have the right equip load. Right. right. So this is when I, I lightened up enough to roll through him because I didn't know how to fight him without doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if I can't get to the other side of this guy, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um, weirdly enough, for being fucking huge, like this guy, I don't I don't think this boss is very hard. Right. Um, every time I fought him, which is now four times I've first tried him. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's it's weird. The boss difficulty inconsistency is a thing in this game. Yeah. Where there are really huge spikes and then just like large periods of nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, guys that fall apart like tissue paper. Yeah. Um, the big this thing, is one of those, I feel. The big thing with this guy, you know, for as big as he is, he's got mad ups. So you just wait for him to do his jumping attack and then get in, get in some attacks and then just try and like bait him by standing at the correct distance to get him to do, to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, if you head to the right at ground level, you also kind of pass by some gallows. That's another place where dead uh, other dead players will spawn, which is mm-hmm. kind of fun. Um, but this is where you see the heart seekers, those uh, floating eyeball men um, yeah. who buff other enemies with invincibility. Here, it's not that big of a problem. In other places, it feels like a it feels like a real uh, thumb in your eye. Yeah, yeah. Um, these these things are visually neat. Yes, at the very least. Um, but they are they are kind of a pain, especially if you don't have any kind of dis, uh, ranged weapon mm-hmm. to kind of take them out in advance. Yeah, they'll hover um, up above your reach. Yeah, and it really matters what they're going to, you know, to to get up. You know, what they're going to buff. Right. That uh, can really really make this yeah better or worse. Yeah, but the main area, like you know, above those crack and cyclops, is just uh, kind of a featureless keep, right? Yeah, um, sunken is its main feature. I would say. And that concludes <laughs> my essay about the sunken keep. Keep means keep. And sunken means Webster defines keep as. Um, there's not there's not a whole lot about it, though, I don't no, think. No. Um, if you head to the upper left here, which this is like path mandatory, like you have to do this, but it's kind of weirdly out of the way. Right. From the keep um, is another boss fight uh, kind of right away. So this is three boss fights in like super, super quick succession. Mm-hmm. All of which are not, or the second two of which there's not very much to. Right. Which really makes me feel like some of these just need to be mini bosses Mm -hmm. or just like a single strong enemy or any number of things that would have kind of cut down on boss bloat Mm -hmm. here. Um, This one's also very weird because you can come in from different directions. Yes. Um, If you don't, if you don't come in from the way that it intends you to, uh, it can kind of get you it, the, I, it might've been a glitch. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you come in for me, I came in through the left. Yeah. At one point, it didn't you, play the you, like. You didn't have title. to fight him. If you beat the, uh, if if you beat the uh, the uh, Kraken Cyclops, you do not have to fight the False Jester. Well, I, I mean, I I did, you oh, know. So yeah. I, I did I did fight him. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have to. I mean, but I, yeah. I did end up fighting him. But the boss music doesn't play. Oh, so weird. It, you don't get the like close up in the title card. He just immediately <laughs> jumped my shit. Oh, jeez. Um, I still didn't die because he's <laughs> he's just like a regular enemy. So this is the False Jester. Yeah. Um. This is a, this is a waste. I don't understand why this is in the game. <laughs> Um, he's, so it's kind of like a nimble, like fakey jester character, um, who kind of jumps around, but he's Mm -hmm. so easy and he does very little damage. Yeah. Um, it's very hard for me to imagine people dying to this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, he only exists to, you know, to justify the second NPC or to build him up. Like, you know, he has taken the place of the real jester. This is a Kraken who, you know, shapeshifted into this horrible monstrosity with a jester hat in order to, you know, get the adventurers who are seeking the guidance of, of, of the real jester, the mad jester, uh, behind him. But yeah, he just like, it's just quick attacks and combos is all that he does. Yeah. 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 Um, this NPC is kind of cool. I like this guy specifically because it's like a little bit of an Alice in Wonderland kind of thing. He is sitting on the ceiling and speaking primarily in riddles, um, and rhyming at you. Um, and it kind of obliquely hints like, you know, like says like, are you seeing the world the right way? Like, are you noticing what's amiss? Yes. Um, so of course you just you know go along with whatever he's saying. Um, I'm sure it doesn't let you not. Right. Uh, right. Because you because you have to uh, you have to have this. Um, he gives you a brand, which is how you're going to actually get new abilities. <laughs> I love this in this game. <laughs> like they don't even offer up any back to you afterwards. It's kind of like, hey, I can. <laughs> do you want me? Do you want me to 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 etch this into your body forever? Just give me your hand. <laughs> like, yep. They just have irons in the fire. Literal irons in the fire. <laughs> and yep. And and then just. Uh, Burn this symbol on your hand, which gives you a new power, um, which is, lets you l- utilize those obelisks, which you mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is actually awesome. I love so this. I, I'm generally pretty negative on this game. The way this is uh, <laughs> made into kind of navigation puzzles later mm-hmm. uh, is great. And the yeah. way this plays with the other brands you get mm-hmm. uh, is great. Yeah. Um, this is the coolest thing about this game, I think, um, kind of in general. Yeah. Uh, is the way those three brands work together. Yeah. So what this does, when you use this at an obelisk, you will rise up to the ceiling. This will invert gravity for you until you pass by some of these little exit gates that will that, that will set it right again. But, you know, you are dancing on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, what, what a feeling. Yep. Um, <laughs> so and this is used to get kind of get treasure and stuff. 
and later used to really deviously hide things. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's pretty neat. And it's a really, you know, it's disorienting. Um, it looks <laughs> neat. It's really imaginative. Like, I think this yeah. is actually extremely cool. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Um, so you can, you can head up from his lair up to the festering banquet. Why you, again, why you would ever want to, I have well, no, I mean, no like, idea. Like this is just putting you back on the path to the, you know, the, the, the bandits pass or whatever. Oh, yeah, I guess and then to the castle. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Um, you're right. This is actually is a good, good backtrack. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that part of the reason why this one is, is good. I was thinking, I was thinking of something different. I, th- I think I, when I read Festering Banquet, I was thinking Village of Smiles. Oh, yeah. Uh, for some reason, because you, you don't ever need to go back there, <laughs> um, except for to give that guy his bag of dirt. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you head back to the uh, the Festering Banquet, which you can head to the right through the Bandit's Pass to get to the Castle of Storms, where the dude is now missing, but you can now utilize that obelisk yep. to get inside. The bridge being out is not a concern because there is a ceiling above it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Like a reverse bridge. <laughs> And this gets you into a balls hard area that I cannot stand. I think I think the Castle of Storms is really hard. Yeah. And this is I think this is very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, part of it is hiding. I mean, not hiding out if that's the right word, but you don't get a sanctuary for a long time. Right. Uh, and here the first sanctuary is pretty hidden. Um, it's up and to the left. Yeah. Far to the left. Like you have to leave the the main tower and go into another mm-hmm. building. And- um. <laughs> Yeah, like, mo- like that- most of my time was spent exploring the main hall looking for a sanctuary off of it. There are a lot of little offshoots, but there are way more. Like, there are way too many enemies in this. Yeah, the um, a big deal with it is that this is when uh, two real kind of problems of uh, one, a lack of polish, one of two dimensions, I think that really rear their head. One, uh, this is where the fire ghost come from as i mentioned Mm -hmm. if you're not doing enough damage to them um so one of them is coming at you from like a 30 degree angle i can hit it once that doesn't stagger it it doesn't uh kill it it goes through me and sets me on fire Mm -hmm. uh then you have to turn around (laughs) into the ground i turn around and then it comes from like a 45 or like 70 degree angle from below me Mm -hmm. you know there's just it's very and i'm taking damage over time this whole time yeah um, these things are such a pain to deal with if your DPS is not strong enough. And even if your DP like DPS is good, if you're not doing enough damage in a single hit, mm-hmm. uh, because they don't have poise, like they don't, uh, they don't, you can't stagger them. Mm-hmm. Um, that yeah. sucks. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, these things suck. It's like the designers are pointing a, like they're just hovering a laser pointer over your character that is doing damage to it the whole time. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. you're, and you're trying to like, like a cat bat it away from you. And, and fire isn't a isn't a status effect. There's nothing I can take to not be on fire. Right. Um, I could, you know, gear up for fire resistance. Mm-hmm. But this is just like a that's like a little Medusa head on me. Like it's not like a, you know, a big deal. Ultimately, yeah. you do want to gear up for fire resistance for the end boss. If I'm the most charitable thinking I could have is that they make this enemy really annoying to make you want to gear up for fire. So you're prepared for the boss. Yeah, there are better ways to do that. <laughs> um, another issue, though, that happens here is we run into the classic uh castlevania skeletons that that's throwing things at you in a wide arc Mm -hmm. um once these things trigger they can target you from off screen yep so this first encounter this first kind of landing you can get to here you head up you find the skeleton and the two flaming skulls Mm -hmm. um i want to get out of range of that skeleton so i can fight these two flaming skulls if you go back down below him to fight them the skeleton from where you can't see him is just throwing things down at you Mm -hmm. it's really hostile yeah um and the the level is kind of like that uh, in general. There are a couple of things that are you know a little bit more nuanced yeah. than that. There's like a couple sorcerer monsters you fight. Yeah, they're like the big guys. I like those sorcerers. Those are those are good. Yeah, those you know those things are fine. Like yeah. they they do not bother me. The court sorcerer yeah. enemies, but the a lot of times they're remixed with these flaming skulls mm-hmm. that just make anything else you're fighting at the same time feel unfair and annoying. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to just being an add on challenge. And similarly for Neo, there's also flaming skulls that function exactly the same way. <laughs> Fun. It's like, it, like, end flame, like, I would never say end flaming skulls. Like, that's not me, but like, here I am, like, with souls like not, not doing good flaming skulls. You know? <laughs> if, if you're not doing them right, you don't deserve the privilege. I just... Abort the death preg. Like, <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> don't get. Yep. No. Don't, no. don't you dare give birth to that bonehead in my office. Yep. Uh, God, yeah. Drew Drill is a national treasure. He's the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of half waiting. I wonder if there'll be like a, a weird like hipster backlash against Drill at any point. I'm sure there will be. Like the, 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 that happened with uh, with horsey books. You know. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet, but I can just imagine somebody being like, 
man, this guy, you know, and just like, I, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I don't want to live in a world without grill. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> There, there's so much going on here that you came you can't even appreciate the tower knights that they put in like i would like to yeah. fight these tower knights yeah they, they put these it just it's it's too dense yeah you know and that's a that's a problem that the game kind of has there are a couple areas you know it's not quite uh you know as bad as it could be you know but there isn't uh these kind of feelings of long kind of quiet yeah that maybe i want uh, it happens sometimes but again it's pretty rare yeah so so you head outside of the castle and you work your way up around the outside. You find you eventually find your uh, your sanctuary, which is a good a godsend, just a fucking yeah. godsend. Um, and the boss of this area is the uh, the Kraken Worm, um, yes. and it's a it's a dragon. It's a cool dragon fight. Um, uh, actually, no, this is, took me two nights of play to beat. Yeah, this is a bad dragon fight. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, this isn't a cool dragon fight. This is a very yeah. bad fight. You're, you're, you are fighting a cool looking dragon. I do not like this fight whatsoever. This is the one yeah. that I ground up for um, just because nothing would work for me. I like I, I I was so distraught at this. Like it felt like um, the Duke's Dear Freya all over again. I I could not see a realm in which I got past it. Mm. Yeah, it, it's a uh, the big thing for me is this uh, in kind of general, you know, in the polish category of things that this this game kind of does poorly, like um, are really on display here. But one of which being uh, that he can hit you while you're on the ground, mm -hmm. which I know that's a preference thing. Some people are literally think that's not a problem. I just think, you know, uh, one one consequence per mistake yeah. is, is pretty much what I want. Um, and that so that's what applies to grab attacks. It applies to things like that. Um, but the other thing this guy does is he gets off screen all the time. Yeah. And them not having kind of bounding boxes for for bosses during boss fights mm -hmm. is so weird to me. Yeah. Um, because this guy will do things like he will fly up in the air. That's his kind of uh, his move when you're not engaging with him in melee. Every once in a while, he flies up and does these dive runs, uh, these kind of uh, bombing runs on you with with fire. Mm -hmm. um, he can just kind of go off the screen. There's no wall there. The mm -hmm. screen just kind of stops scrolling, so you can't go through there. And you don't know when he's going to appear from there. You don't know exactly what angle, what height. He's going to come through. Yeah. Um, like it sucks. Yeah. Like that, like it just shouldn't be. And it, it's, this isn't as bad as it gets. Like there are other bosses that do that worse. Yeah. Um, but the way that boss arenas interact with, uh, you know, with, with these kind of edge walls like that, whether it's them going off the screen or them trapping you in a corner, um, and there's just nothing you can do. Things like that are just weird, like kind of bosses that are not designed for 2d, mm -hmm. uh, properly. Like he has too wide of a range of movement. Yeah. For the, the actual arena available to him. Yeah. Um, so in addition to that, like, I, you know, you want to gear up uh, for fire resistance, A, because of the dragon. And, you know, that that is the most apparent way that he can do damage to you. Right. He does these kind of sweeps. And if you, you know, don't run in the exactly the correct fashion, then he will hit you with this and will do damage over time and really uh, like nickel and dime your uh, fatigue or your wounding with yeah. it. So like that's a that's a really really big issue with that. Um the the bigger issue for me, you know, I geared up for that. Yeah, I wore all my blacksmith gear and my pumpkin head and and you know, figure out figured out how to dodge it. Um it felt like a really bad balance problem because no matter how much I leveled up, no matter you know how I mess with my gear or mess with my tactics or tried dodging, um, from a standing position, this thing can either do like a tail whip or a, uh, a snap with his head. That'll just kill me. That would just kill me in one hit. Yeah. Um, and so like that to me, <laughs> it didn't feel like I had a chance to dodge it. Um, you can say, get good all you want. It just felt like, Hey, the boss has decided it's time for you to die now. So you're done. Yeah. Yeah. He, this is a huge wall for me. This is my first wall, yeah. uh, playing through, um, you know, and then, and, and Spoiler, like the next one's a big wall too. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, the kind of two bad bosses right in a row that have two problems uh, with things the game doesn't do very well. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I do not care for the Kraken Worm, but one bit. He's also just a dragon. Yeah. You know, like there's not like a cool story about this guy or anything. He's the dragon that old top knot uh, barista knight <laughs> that we saw before <laughs> was trying to uh, was warning us about. But it's just a dragon. It's the dragon like your barista warned you about. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's you versus the dragon your barista warned you about. Um, but it, there's not, there's just not, you know, I don't feel cool fighting him. It's not like a dragon with this huge story behind him that has this kind of feeling of mythic legend, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, the context wasn't there to make me feel good when I beat him other than the relief of being done with it, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think this kind of sucks. 
the nice thing is you get to after this, um, the reason why you're fighting him is you go through this pretty cleverly designed uh, little area where there are these drops, these points of no return mm-hmm. that you pass uh, to get down to this character, the despondent thief, um, <laughs> who's one of our NPCs here. Um, she came here uh, with a noble uh, who she was uh, either trying to rob. Do you know that's off the top of your head? No, no. She was here. Um, there's something she actually reveals a huge part of the story and it might not be here. It might be the next time we talk to her, but mm-hmm. um, she mentions that the person she was uh, the noble that she was either escorting or uh, was going to be a mark turned out to actually be a slave um, mm. that was sent here. And that actually plays into a big part of the kind of trick to why people are ending up on this Island yeah, uh, or being sent to it rather. Um, you know, but she, uh, the big thing is she gives you another brand. Mm-hmm. So the brands are coming fast and furious at this point. Yeah. Um, this is another good one. Yes. The shadow. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. This is, th- this adds a wall jump to your repertoire. Um, so you can cling to a wall, uh, for a pretty generous amount of time. Um, and it opens up, uh, very quickly after this, we're going to get, um, long sections with these shoots that we're going to be like zigzagging back and forth. We're going to be Sam fishering up them. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels pretty good. Yeah. Um, you can, you can do it, uh, twice on the same wall without hitting the ground, mm-hmm. but if you can jump to another wall, you're safe. And those uh, points of no return, you can actually just head down from here. But if you head back the way you came, those points of no, no return teach you how to use the wall jump. <laughs> yep. You know, so it's 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 pretty good tutorializing, actually. Yeah. Now this is a this is a good power. Um, again, like the platforming in this is is pretty great, which is good because that is that would be a terrible thing if they if they didn't nail it. So yeah. 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 Um, so there you meet your other NPC here, the the ma- the masterless knight. You know, he asked me. Knight. Yes, the barista knight um, asked me, like, hey, you know, do you ever wonder where all these buildings came from? Like, like this is an island in the middle of nowhere. Yet we've seen all these all these different things again, planting that planting that into your head, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the scarecrow appears as well yep. uh, after you kind of uh, you make your way through kind of a shadow flip section, kind yeah. of combing for treasure and things that you can get now. Yeah. And uh, gives you his uh, his brand of cranky gobbledygook. <laughs> yep. Uh, kind of asking like, hey, do you know what I've done? You know? Yeah. Is, uh, yep, yep. is, is his big is his big thing at this point. Below the uh, the Castle of Storms, um, about the Castle of Storms, like it was once ruled over by this by this just king who was tempted into, you know, corruption. That'll come up later. Um, but just know that usual yeah. kind of thing. Below this is the Red Hall of Cages, um, yes. which is. I have a lot of problems with this area actually yeah. too. Like it's visually distinct mm-hmm. and if you, it's a big torture chamber. Yep. Um, kind of big torture castle. Yep. So it, like, it looks foreboding and cool. Uh, um, <laughs> I like a sense in principle. Yes. Yeah. It's got some sense qualities to it. Um, in that there's kind of the machinery and traps and stuff. It's like three times as big as any area we've. Oh yeah. Fought so far. Yeah. Um, and it's really fall damage focused. <laughs> yep. It's a lot of verticality, a lot of, uh, you know, making jumps from elevators, uh, that are moving things like that. Yeah. Um, so the instant death, you know, ratio has just like gone up quite a bit. Yeah. I, I have no idea how to express <laughs> the level of gobsmackedness, the, the amount to which I was gobsmacked by the run from the sanctuary to the uh to to the shortcut that takes you down to the very bottom of the stage i don't know how many tumba with i don't know how to describe just how huge this level is yeah yeah it's really really big yeah um, and you're fighting you know, so, for every inch for most of it yeah it's also it's very big and it's very hard yeah you know it's another kind of difficulty wall kind of section you know whereas you, you get the sense the castle of storms is kind of trying to be a little bit of like this is the Anne orlando like this is the big set piece castle thing um, and then right afterwards comes this, which is like, now the real salt starts here, <laughs> you know? Um, and it, I don't know. I just kind of found it mostly frustrating yeah. to move through and to keep straight. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of, uh, this is a, a navigation problem for me yeah, where it's like, of, uh, am I on backs on it? Yeah. Tons of switchbacks. Is this, which elevator shaft is this? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these all kind of look the same. Um, I had a real I had a real issue with that. If I, you know, again, the challenge for this kind of level design, especially in a souls, um, is, you know, if you put me down with a pen and some paper, could I draw you a map of it? I don't I don't know that I could. I couldn't I can't draw a map of any area in this game. Right. Like perhaps maybe a festering banquet, Mm -hmm. you know, in general terms. But this has slid off my memory 
in a way. And this was some, this is an area I played recently. This isn't something I haven't played since the game came out. Yeah, this is sli- so. I, and I played it four times. I played it with four <laughs> different characters. Jesus it has slid off my memory to a degree that like games don't usually do. Yeah. Uh, just because it is just kind of this morass of just torture equipment and <laughs> the same kind of bad guys and elevators and gears. Yeah. Just kind of forever. And I just I don't know why this is so like over designed, I guess. I don't know. It it doesn't like make its point and do its gameplay gimmick and get out. It makes that point a bunch of times. Yeah. I don't know if it needs to be this vertically long to like match up with the world map. That like somehow. that's the sense that I get because like this connects to a whole bunch of areas too. Like weirdly, this yeah. is a hub for the uh, like this and the ruined temple are the hubs for the uh, the the eastern portion of the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the the encounters. Yeah, yeah. So here. they swap out a lot of the enemies. Like a lot of the people you're going to see here are themed for the place. Um, you know, we have these vile guards and torturers who are similar to like our regular hunched over undead kind of people. The vile guards wear these masks that have smiles on them and they attack with these to- toxic crossbows, oftentimes covering uh, the torturers who are their melee counterparts or their little cleavers. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. Uh, there are these uh, these jailers, these golder guys. Jailers, G- gowlers, uh, G- gowlers, G- jailers. Yeah, old old timey jailer. I, I, I pogey and guile. Yeah, yeah. Um, this guy is visually kind of cool looking. He's got uh, he kind of has a Resident Evil thing. He's asymmetrical. Mm-hmm. He's got like one one big arm. Yeah. Um, and these guys are actually I like fighting these guys. I like them specifically because they are not uh, they're pretty easy if there's one of them, but they mix them up with smaller dudes. Yeah, that make them much trickier. Mm-hmm. And you're you're pretty much always fighting them fighting them on sure footing too. So yeah, they they, yeah. they know and, not to mix them in with something that'll make it hairier. Yeah, and their yeah. bones kind of stick out of their back. They're kind of cool again. <laughs> yeah, um, the red lords are kind of the bronze knight uh, equivalent for this. Uh, like mm-hmm. the you know player character ass enemy um, has these cage helmets and attacks with a, a polearm sickle and some shields. Again, often mixed in with some of these other kind of torture kind of enemies. Um, I like fighting these. I don't know if just again if they feel similar to the bronze knights to me. Yeah. They're a little bit more, um, you know, they got a little bit more stamina Mm -hmm. to them. So you have to be a little bit more careful. Yeah. They're not as easy to parry as well. Um, I think um, one of the big enemies uh, or two of the big enemies that show up here, one that I have a real problem with are these hanged men. God. Um, I think this is a really bad designed enemy. Um, It's kind of a cool idea. Yep. Right. And the the way to make this work is to make these guys on the ground. Mm -hmm. Because what they do is they, uh, there are these hanged characters, uh, hanged men. Um, they start the cross ho- cross cross hair appears on you. Yep. Um, that slowly starts zooming in. Um, I feel like we've done a game that does this kind of recently, or you know, somewhere on Watch Out for Variables, we talked about a game that does this exact same thing. Yeah, nothing's um, coming up. Once that cross hair uh, gets complete, you teleport to the enemy. You're hung for a second, and then you go back to where you were. You're hurt. Oh, I, I never, is, I never went back to where I was. Like this, like they would just keep on get over hearing me, like back to where they're at. Like it doesn't. I thought, yeah, maybe I thought I thought you just kind of flashed over there and then flashed back and nope. it just did some damage. Um, regardless of which, it, you know, it does a chunk of damage, knocks you on your ass. Um, that's fine and kind of a cool idea for an enemy. Yeah. But because they're flying enemies in Salt and Sanctuary, <laughs> if you're not and you can interrupt them, any attack will stop the the thing. Yeah. But they, they show up and there's like like four of them in the room and they're all flying above you. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm jumping up trying to swat something out of like a tree. Like I'm trying to get my Frisbee out of a tree. Yeah before this countdown happens and they can chain do it to you because there's a bunch of them. Um, like these things suck. Yeah. Uh, um, thankfully they don't show up in very many places. Um, the thing that knows me most about them is that it just kills any momentum. Again, this is something that stops you from just running through any room that they're in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, they, they will always just kind of get over you. There's another enemy in the next area that has a similar momentum stopping mm-hmm. effect that I just think is very frustrating. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do, I do not like these guys. It just doesn't doesn't feel good, you know. Like they're yeah. they're they're fine to fight if you if you opt to fight them, but again, give me that give me that route, you know. Like, yeah. Give me the route out as opposed to this thing, which there is literally no way to avoid fighting them or engaging with yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. There's also uh, there's one of these I just want to bring it up. We're not quite there yet, but there's a split swordsman here. I think mm-hmm. they appear in the last area as well. They do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These are the super agile uh, kind of knight characters who do this this teleport mm-hmm. above you to do a drop attack on you. 
Um, I don't actually mind these guys. No, no. There's one position right outside the boss that will follow you. <laughs> so know? it just becomes a patience tax of like, I have to stop and kind of rotely kill this guy every yeah. single time, or I have to fight him at the same time I fight a boss. Thankfully, I was able to, I think, defeat him in a single uh, strong attack by this point. So, mm. you know, it was just, it was a, it was a small little like checklist item to do. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, you also have these, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, so the upper area is just these switchbacks. The lower area has these moving platforms, uh, you know, uh, platforms that are attached to discs. Um, you know, you have a lot of, um, you know, elevators at this point, you can activate an elevator that takes you all the way back up to the sanctuary pretty much. Uh, that, that was the, especially galling one, uh, for me. Oh, also that, uh, that shaft is open. And it's uh, oftentimes hidden behind a, a screen transition. So there were times where I was running and then just immediately fell um, an absurd distance down to the bottom. Because there are, there are like four places that happens. Yeah, there are little there are little <laughs> things off the shaft of the elevator on on the left elevator, like three or four of them. Yeah. So if you had to, you know, you get off the elevator at the right time to get this little hidden hidden area. That's fine. Mm. But if once you walk out, it's very easy to just have like a total video gamey artificial construct thing like mm -hmm. my character would be able to see mm -hmm. uh, i'd be able to see this pit if i was in dark souls i can't see it because of this perspective and you can just run off and and fall to your death yeah like in a way that feels cheap mm -hmm. uh, yeah me. so that's there um fortunately this shortcut is a little bit obviated by the by the small shrine that you can get to like this was mm -hmm. the secret to beating this boss for me because i i just was not able to um not i just i don't know what it is but the like the psychology of knowing that the cost of losing is another terrible run-up like that even with the uh the elevator uh made it more difficult to just kind of engage this thing with the confidence that i needed you know yeah yeah that's i mean we talked about it in like pre-patch bloodborne where it's like the big reason not to die is not to want to watch two load screens yeah you know, um, the reason why I wouldn't level up and actually try new things to the boss or switch out my equipment is because I didn't want to watch the load screens. Mm -hmm. Like those little the death by a thousand cuts thing is really real. Yep. Friction is you real. Know? Yeah. Like even if it's like, oh, this takes 30 seconds, like if it's just again and again and again, like, you know, and even this small boss run up, which, you know, with this little split night on the way, it ended up becoming very obnoxious to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the uh, fighting the split night every time doing the kind of like minimal platforming I had to do. Yeah. to get to the boss and it becoming obnoxious. Something that uh, we forgot to mention is that the bosses have these candelabras outside of them. Hopefully nobody flips out about us not mentioning that in the first episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, this is supposed to be uh, a gauge of difficulty, hmm. um, but it's not the developers seeing this. It's in real time. So it's players, how many like percentages of players who are dying on it? Oh, wow. Something like that. So it's, it's not to be trusted uh, <laughs> entirely. You know, I don't know how, I don't know the, absolute mechanics of how that updates and mm -hmm. stuff but that's what that is okay wow um, I, I had no idea that's a that's a nice touch i noticed the candelabras i was kind of like oh this is this is really consistent i never stopped to consider why different ones were lit up more it's it would seem like a uh, almost like a boss order thing mm -hmm. you know because uh early bosses are gonna have fewer of them because they're easier yeah and then as you go there are more candles yeah but uh, it's such a so linear game such a you know a lot of candles does mean a tough boss yeah. is coming um, but, uh, yeah, so you, you run into the candelabra here, which this one, uh, the first time I played this, um, <laughs> last year was not, I mean, my build was better and it wasn't as big a deal, but it still took me several tries. Okay. Um, this time like destroyed me <laughs> over and over again and made me like, this was, I didn't quit here. The next area is actually where I quit the second playthrough. Okay. But this was very close to making me like. Like, why do we, why do we even want to cover this game? Right. Like, <laughs> these guys don't deserve us. You know, yeah. Like this made me so pissed. Mm -hmm. um, this is the tree of men. Yeah. Uh, boy, oh boy. I, this like this back to back with the, with the Kraken worm. Um, I had no, uh, just, I had no patience for it. Uh, for reasons that we're going to get into, this was another one that was just like an entire night worth of effort. Yeah. You know, again, playing it on a deadline, you know, who knows? Somebody could pipe in and say, well, if you weren't hurrying through it, um, it wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been that big of a deal. You wouldn't have had the pressure, et cetera. And down the line. No, I think that there are fundamental problems with the tree of men. I want to yeah. get it out of the way. This is an aesthetically pleasing boss. I like the idea of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, not, not the, not the gameplay idea. Cause I, th I think that's garbage, but the idea that this is torture equipment that is so, that is so cursed and so tainted that it gained a life of its own. Um, that's cool. I like that now let's just cut the cut the play apart <laughs> one, one of the things about um visually like that i like about it as well that's worth noting is that 
Um, so I, like I, I would put a, a small damper on that just in that the uh, the reason why it's kind of cool is because it doesn't look like every other just big guy you fight. Mm-hmm. So that's a big a big reason why this does look cool is it stands out. Like I'm I'm grading on such a diminished curve. Yeah. For this, uh, given that like you know the alchemist, the ghost pirate, we're gonna fight. You know the the this swordsman and that swordsman. Like there's just so many people where they're just guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so this fight um, has the kind of feeling of a puzzle boss to it a little bit. Yeah. It's got two phases. Um, it's got these hanged men hanging from this uh, you know weird stick figure guy. Um, you you kill the guys hanging from him to start the second phase. Uh, the reason why this boss fight sucks is it is entirely uh, environmental hazards. Right. That you fight while you fight him. So <laughs> it is platforms that will give way, um, platforms that have these uh, jets of flame mm-hmm. on them, uh, which we didn't really mention those. But that's a, a pretty common trap. Yes. Uh, in the game. And then uh, two pits on either side of the actual fight. Mm-hmm. Bottomless pits. Um, that ended up actually being the big deal. Yeah, that 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 is a tremendous deal because again, you know these the, these platforms, uh, except mercifully the one up closest to his head, um, will fall away from underneath you. Um, and if you do not jump in time, or if you're knocked off by one of these uh, flamethrowers, or if you go to make an attack on some of these hanged men to initiate the second phase, you might land where this thing is walking around. You know, this is a multi-story tall, you know, construct made of these. Uh, it has a stomp attack that if it hits anywhere near- nearby, it has a little bit of a AOE kind of effect to it. It will send you flying um, straight into a wall and then down into this. So walking on the ground, if you are not ready to jump up to a particular platform or if you're trying to cross over and it just decides to proc this, it will just be instant death. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, the idea there is like, don't fight him on the ground. Fair enough. But getting up above, uh, it's very easy to get knocked onto the ground. Mm-hmm. This is a game with knockback. Um, it's very easy to, you know, I can't jump up or I will get hit by fire. Mm-hmm. You know, the platform I'm on will dissolve. The platform above me is on fire. The platform below me has the stomp attack. There's just nowhere to be Yeah. Uh, in this thing. So you have to kind of keep moving. Um, but you know what? This would have been good. This fight would have been fine once you get the air dash. Oh yeah. Definitely. Because then you could, you could cross over from one side to the other without going through the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, here's another thing. Check this out. Uh, just in like mechanics, not working together. Well, um, as we mentioned before, if you die to an environmental hazard, the boss doesn't get your, your power. It creates a salt bat. <laughs> so it's another threat. So you can, when you fall, it doesn't, the boss knocked you into the pit, but the boss doesn't count as what killed you. Mm-hmm. Um, which spawns a, bo- a salt bat in the boss fight. Yep. Um, which is either a distraction, like to try to kill it, or like salt bats aren't like hard enemies. No, no. But it takes like 100% of your concentration to not die <laughs> to this thing. Like you have to constantly be moving. So you may as well just kiss that goodbye. Yeah. And the shrine that we just passed was a little shit shrine that you can't spend souls on. Yep. So like there's no, there's just not a way to like make this work. Like he yeah. has weaknesses. You can hit him with stuff and make yeah. it a little bit easier, yeah. but he's real tanky. Um, and just instant death in a boss fight is, I really, really don't like it, especially with, if you're going to do it, it's like a, an attack with a big wind up that you can dodge. Mm-hmm. This is something that just happens to you while you're traversing, right? Trying to, to engage the actual kind of puzzle of the boss or like the areas where he's, he's vulnerable. Yeah. You know, the different parts of this, they don't hang anywhere close together. And it puts so much onus on you to just kind of like bridge the gap in these systems. And I do not like being torn apart trying to get from one to the other, you know, and it's not that big of a deal once you get to the second phase of the fight. You know, like the like the 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 real problem for me is, you know, hanging out on those low platforms and going after going after the little hand guys all over him. Right. They're they're in fixed positions, not fixed like they move with him. But like, you know, you have to spend a little bit of time on this platform, a little bit of time on this platform. Once you're able to just be up next to his head, which is the only way you can hurt him when you're in the second phase and you're just able to, you know, anticipate his either melee attacks or his weird little beam attacks. That is fine because the platform nearest his head is stable. It will not go yeah. away. And it's easy enough to tell when the when the flamethrowers are going to attack. Like it's it's easy to get him into a loop and engage him up there. Everything up to that, again, was a nightmarish ordeal. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 and even when you're up to that, you had to be very patient because 
he's attacking platforms and the fire is coming. Uh-huh. Just switch back and forth. And if you know that you will get in situations where neither platform is safe. Right. You know, which encourages you to go down, which encourage puts you on the shaky platform, which encourages you to get on the floor, which is death. And mm-hmm. it's just like it, it goes from being frustrated, frustrating to tedious. Yep. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I really hate it. Yeah. Um, took me a thousand tries and it was just like, this is just this is just shit. You mm-hmm. know, I just I don't know. This is just a really like like irritating thing that again, like if you had that air dash, I could see it being kind of fun. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you had a little bit more mo- mobility, like but as is. You know, and it, and it and it would have been an easy thing to fix, like just having the ground be contiguous, mm-hmm. you know, like they didn't need to add that instant death hazard. You know, so many things get offered up on the, the altar of difficulty, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and just end up, you know, becoming frustrating. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's no good. And especially like if you look at this kind of run. So we had the uh, so we had the uh, Castle of Storms with uh, the Flaming Skulls. We had Red Hall of Cages with its just uh, absurd length. And it's boss that was even more frustrating than the Kraken. And now we're going to get to Hager's Cavern. Like, these three areas are this like... This is a triptych of shit. Yeah, this... Like, <laughs> this whole thing smacks a gender turning the fourth of triptych into the triptych of shit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's no good. Uh, because yeah. we're going to get to Hager's Cavern. I think the boss of that... Um, that was not, I think it's pretty good. It's, like it's not as, actually. it wasn't as much as uh, it wasn't as much of a wall. I can look back on it and think like, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's a, okay. I did have, tr- I did have trouble with it, but the area of Hager's cavern is no, uh, it's, it's, it's no great shakes. Like just these three areas with these three bosses. And then after it, like everything is smooth. It's easy, not easy, yeah. you know, like just kind of like, oh, it's, it's going to go by. Nothing rises to the level of frustration. At least no, it didn't no, except for, for some optional areas. Yeah, I thought um, the thing with um, you know, and I'll I'll even go one better than that, or go one further than that, <laughs> is that if you look, um, so those this this uh, these three little bits like the Castle of Storms, the Hall of Red Cages, Hager's Ca- Cavern, and at least two of those bosses, the two bosses we fought previous to that weren't like great, you know, like <laughs> there's there's we haven't really experienced the high highs that this game has, we haven't gotten to yet, right. You know, the parts where this game like really comes alive where it's like, I'm going to turn upside down and do wall jumping puzzles to try to find this cool stuff like hasn't happened yet. There are bosses that are pretty good, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, the Queen of Smiles is fine. The Alchemist is fine. Like, Sound I think Knight that the, is very good tutorial. Boss. Yes, Sound Knight's a very good tutorial boss. I think that the ghost pirate we fight in Hagger's Cavern is a pretty good fight, hmm. but it's nothing is becoming like, man, that's a great fight. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no like Lady Maria's. There's no like, man, this is really impressive. Mm-hmm. there's just this like weird sludge of mediocrity <laughs> to this like first stretch of this, this, this game, you know, and it, it, it does come alive. Like it does get cooler, mm-hmm. but some of this stuff is just really, really, you know, like the highs are not very high, you know, right. it, like this, this boss is not as bad as, you know, the last boss, but I don't, I, it's hard for me to think like, this is awesome. You know, like thinking back on it, there's like only a couple of bosses I think are actually pretty great yeah. in this. You know, it's just, it's a lot of like C pluses, mm-hmm. you know, but I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go to Hager's Cavern because there's some, let's. there's some real problems, uh, with one Vacation particular destination. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and I mean, I will, and we talked about this in the first episode, but like, I think the navigate navigating this area sucks. Yeah. Um, I think everything looks too samey, mm-hmm. like by, by a, by a mile, yeah. you know, it like not this in comparison to other areas. Cause this at least has like kind of a blue color palette, mm-hmm. but you know, taking a snapshot of Hager's Cavern and being like, where is this in Hager's Cavern <laughs> is very difficult for me. Yeah, it wasn't as big of a deal here for me. Like the real problem was was these teleporting skeletons. Oh, um, the, yeah, these. I, woof. <laughs> I am I am 100 100 percent OK with there being a Goonies Cavern in this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Goonies, Goonies Cavern had like traps and like, yeah, castle, like weird things in it, you know, like weird structures and stuff. This is a lot of this is just drippy stone. Yeah, well, I'm thinking yeah. more of like the 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 pirate ships at the bottom, like that that goes a long way for me. But yeah, I just but these are the yeah. these are these skeleporters, like <laughs> these guys. So these are just skeletons. Yep, uh, that teleport around constantly, and they don't teleport and attack. Sometimes they just teleport for a long time. Yep, these are these are momentum killers. Uh, you know, more so I would even say than the hangman because they're everywhere here. Yep, and they will follow you across the level, um, as opposed to being roughly contained. Uh, to their place um the teleportation is not that big of a 
deal when it's just like closing the distance. What happens is, um, and, and like I tried a bunch of different uh, weapons with this, it will, they, they will teleport, be really close to you. And then as you turn to, you know, to, to line up and then attack um, in that time, as you're doing the wind up, it will teleport just out of reach to another side. So it's like swatting gnats, gnats mm-hmm. that can stun you and kill you. And again, rocks bury you to death. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is just uh, and sometimes they're just doing it to stall. You know, it feels like they don't even want to attack me. They're just kind of jumping around. Yeah. Um, this is actually what killed my my subsequent playthrough <laughs> was just like being like, I I am too annoyed to deal with these guys. Mm-hmm. This is a really, really bad mechanic that I don't want to struggle through. Like, yes, you can do it. I did it before, you know, but I am too I'm getting too irritated. Yeah. With these things, um, especially when they start mixing them up, because I mm-hmm. think some of the other bosses here are also pretty frustrating. Yeah. Um. The uh. The the weird uh. The caster floating enemies that oh, cast the, that. Uh, the, oh, the like the the screaming AOE. The uh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is a one. You know, pretty much a one shot kill. Yep. Well, because uh, uh. Because it's not just like one one piece of damage. It will lock you in. And yeah. And just like uh, uh. Not slowly drain you, but just like incrementally drain you. Um. And especially a bunch of them will proc it at the same time when there's when they're next yes, to you. They stack. Yeah. You know. So so many times in this game there are like you know they want to introduce a monster and they do it with like two or three of them instead of one of them yeah you know and they do it excuse me they do it with uh other enemies so like dealing with these skeletons while dealing with any of this stuff is just really really obnoxious yeah so like i can stop and just sit there and watch the skeleton have his fun for a while get him one hit have him and this was uh you know if, if you're not doing a big strength weapon this is another thing where your dps you know what you can i keep saying dps but it's not that it's what you can do in one hit yeah yeah uh it needs to be a certain minimum level to make these things not annoying mm-hmm. um you know if i don't want to deal with that you're just kind of fucked yeah you know so it doesn't have that kind of uh you know hey if this guy's annoying you can kind of get past him and engage him in a different way they just stick to you and you do it while dealing with all this other stuff yeah yeah, like I, I could totally see this being, you know, <laughs> being just like the fuck this, I give up moment. After the Red Hall of Cages and dealing with the Tree of Men, I was Jeff, I was Jeff Bridges fearless for a while. Yeah. So like that yeah. got me through this. Like it was no nowhere near as bad in comparison. But yes, it is, it is intolerable. Uh, we are still going to have to mute your track for the rest of the episode just because you didn't play the game recently here. So oh, okay, uh, people are going to hear us. You can still ask questions, and I will, I will rephrase it. Um, I'll just give you prompts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can, you can monologue that. You can uh, Dan Carlin's hardcore history the rest of the season. <laughs> okay. I, pl- I, I played it less than a year ago. I know. Like it is a. I mean, we. You know, that's. I think that's honestly a strength of the network is that we come into things with fresh memory uh-huh. of them. But I, I didn't want to deal with bullshit, man. Yeah, like no, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just busting your balls. I, I no, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> arguing with the man in my head. Like it's not. A, <laughs> It's not you, um, but I just, I just, it was just like, oh, this isn't fun. I could be having fun now, <laughs> you know. Like, why would I not? Why would I choose not to have fun? That's, that's the thing. There's always outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like, again, like, don't, don't tempt me with, with boredom. Don't threaten me with frustration. <laughs> you know, it is just, uh, you can, you're not going to win that. Yeah. No, yeah. there there are other floating casters. We have these pale witches who are uh, kind of our caster knights here. Um, they mm-hmm. can replace the uh, those uh, court sorcerers from up above. Yeah. Down uh, down at ground level, uh, we well, have this. This is uh, this. These guys also have a lightning attack that I think yes. is a real problem. Oh yeah, um, yeah, because it'll uh, it sticks it around for a while. Yeah, yeah, it splits into three and homes at you. And these guys are also stacked. Mm-hmm. Like there will sometimes be two of them. They both do that dealing with skeletons you're dealing with man scorpion tarkus yeah like it's you know it's just it's just some shit yeah so uh yeah you get the armor mites who are the man scorpion tarks uh down at the yep. bottom um there are just so many of them i do they they rarely show up um outside of that screen like there are a couple perched on the edge of on the edges of platforms mostly they're just there to keep you off of the bottom floor um if that doesn't do it the vacant blades uh these mini boss enemies um will uh, kind of show up and attack you um, mm-hmm. And then, like, hey, why not? Let's just throw some spiders in here as well. <laughs> some ambushes <laughs> in this platforming heavy place. Did we mention that this has uh, Mega Man Two timed? Uh, oh uh, my god! Uh, 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 <laughs> gl- glowing, <laughs> glowing uh, timed light platforms. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> they, they start out pretty, you know, generous. Yeah. Yeah, the light things, but then when they eventually get more complicated, I get pretty frustrated by them. Yeah. Um, one of the things that happens with these timed light puzzles that wouldn't happen in Mega Man is because you can mantle. 
Um, that takes some really <laughs> precious time. You, you will mantle up onto a platform that is no longer there. That is, yeah, by that the end of the animation. As you, yeah. yeah, exactly. So let's just like chill, cool the fuck out, Hagrid's Cavern. <laughs> like, between it, like I'm gonna need you to settle down. <laughs> like, this is uh, lo- this is the last time we get you a regular Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, so somebody will sleep tonight. Um, it just there's there's just a lot, uh, yeah. a lot going on here. Of which, like, a, you know, some of those things uh, individually work fine. Like, yeah. fighting the Tarkuses is fine. Mm-hmm. Even these, like, high damage caster enemies, I think, would be fine individually. Yeah, I yeah. just think it's a problem when they are stacked on top of one yeah. another. Like, in a vacuum, the platforming puzzles with the time blight, like, that's not yeah. too huge of a problem, you know? No, no, no. If you, if you place that above a non-instant death thing first... Mm-hmm. Like the, they're introduced here very markedly above a, a pit that will kill you. Yes. Don't you like that's it's like make it it's Mega Man like <laughs> game design. Like you know better than that. Yeah. You introduce a hazard in a low risk environment, then yeah. up the risk. Like you know this. <laughs> you know. Um. So anywho, uh, you pretty much you just kind of explore it. You treasure Roomba, the kind of whole thing. Yeah. The um, the key is to get a get a key. You have to um you know invert and get into the small little room where you can open up a gate and you're looking for the cellar key, uh, which will get you into the boss. Yes. Yeah. Um. Who is the disemboweled husk? Yes. Um. um Gary, I have not been putting down music cues on these, so. Oh, I I mean I'm not. Like, It'd be very funny if I just put in the same boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be such a such a, such a burn. <laughs> like, um, if I actually put in boss music, yeah, I, I just I I didn't see fit, but I didn't consult you when I did that either. No. So are you fine not having boss markers? Uh, honest, yeah, I'm fine with that. Honestly, like I'm probably not going to use a lot of the music in this yeah. because it feels mean to do so. Like I don't think it's very good. Right. Um, you know the intro theme. You know that boss music will make it in somewhere. I think the end bosses have some different music. Yeah, yeah. that might be worth putting in, but like. Yeah, the music is is you know butt chugging, uh, guitar <laughs> rock, and then uh, the same kind of like dramatic boss music every single time. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, but the dis- the disemboweled husk, uh, you kind of go in. You're fighting him on the deck of a ship, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is kind of like a pirate pirate lord. This is the remnants of Hager. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the eponymous Hager. Um, and he, uh, a- well, they're being ahead. driven by a doll. Oh yeah, like th- this is him being hollowed out, and there's a tiny doll inside of him controlling him. <laughs> it's man blocking like, him. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. It's a it's a Steve banning him. <laughs> like water. Um, the uh, but this fight is it reminds me a lot of the alchemist fight. Um, in that like he he is roughly the same kind of enemy size. He's less projectile y, um, more kind of melee y, but it is uh. He does some area to dial stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, so kind of where he shoots up in the air. Yeah. He's got a, so, so he's got this blender bus. He does two attacks. He will either shoot straight up in the air, which causes the, uh, the shot to fall down on you, which you have to have to avoid, uh, or block. I ended up, uh, relying on a shield here where I otherwise didn't so much uh, uh, by this point. Um, or he will just kind of like shoot directly at you multiple times. Uh, those will kind of like just chew through you very quickly. For me, the key to success was staying close enough that he never procked those. Mm. He he will still do kind of a shot when you're close to him. Um, for me, it was about getting the dodge timing of that correct. Yeah. Um, which is a, which is a small window, you know. So and that was the big uh, kind of the hill for this mm-hmm. that I had to climb was figuring out how to get uh, how to get that window right. Yeah. But. I had no problem with this guy. It's a dude fight. Yeah, it, it, it was just it was pretty difficult. It took a lot of attempts for me. I had to go. Uh, this was a, a little bit of an equipment check as well. Um, I had to mm. go and do some upgrades. And I think this might have been when I when I switched to the Jaws of Death, um, which is, you know, judge me if you want. Come at me. I don't care. It's a good weapon. And it <laughs> and it made bosses doable for me. So apparently that is the uh, like, you know, the OP weapon, Yeah. Um, which I was not at the time I played through uh, was not. um you know, well known, so I never switch yeah. to that. But don't uh, you know? Don't just just jaws of death me, right? Uh, things something that like is a is a I don't know what the name is for it, but it keeps coming up on shows, and it's worth thinking about is the idea that like if there's one key to something, mm-hmm. um, that doesn't make it well done just because there's a key to it. Mm-hmm. You know, if if a if a boss is now easy and fair and and fun feeling. If you use one particular weapon, mm-hmm. that does not excuse all the flaws in the boss. Right. 
you know, and I, I don't even think that I like I think this boss is pretty good. But mm-hmm. if if somebody's going to listen to us talk about the tree of men and be like, if you just use X, he goes down really quickly. Right. Right. What if I'm not spec for X? What if I don't know <laughs> about X? Like, what if I don't, uh, you know, don't have the uh, the resources to buy X? Yeah. You know, that's it, not that can still be a flaw in the game just because there is a way around it. Yeah. And a, and a failure to seek that out as like the, you know, like, oh, what is the particular win button for this? That is not refusing to adapt to the challenge because you can still be trying different weapon types within your class. You can still be, you know, checking for elemental um, kind right. of things like just Kukri or just Jaws of Death. This thing as like uh, as, as like a blanket, like, oh, well, you know, that that's obviously the, the, the strategy kind of not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a frustrating thing to hear, you know, because there is uh, when you start confusing what is possible with like what like you, you need to it's like um like it, it feels like it is like court case kind of thing where it's like what would a reasonable person do, <laughs> right. you know, like, there you know, it is possible to do all this stuff. You know, it's it's there's a, there's an absolute easy end of the spectrum and then there's Lobos killing it with the joke weapon <laughs> on the hard end of the spectrum. Um, you need to have more than just the far right of that needle be fun and engaging and, right. and a proper challenge level. You know, it needs to be kind of like the the right quarter of it or so. There mm-hmm. should be a lot of different ways to approach it and still have it be not just possible, but, you know, fun and engaging and yeah. viable and hit that flow state kind of balance between frustration and challenge, which is what video games aspire to do yeah. in general. Yeah. At its worst, what it, what, what that comes down to, like when it's just like, Oh, just, just use this particular weapon, um, comes down to a game, not respecting your, your, your choices when it comes to like specking out, like I really like playing with a whip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, like that, that, that is, you know, you, you, you can start with a whip in this game to make it not viable, you know, like yeah. you know, or it's, it's not that it's not viable to, to 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 make it to make the cost of that choice frustration is it's 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 not great. You know, it may be what brings a lot of people to this. You know, I understand that the you know people get different things out of it. It's not for me. You know, and, and, it, and it does feel like it is railroading you away from a choice that feels good. Something else to bring up too, like if you want an example of a game that doesn't do that well, and you know, people, you know, I think that the meme of me hating it is died but because I, I, I don't i still really love it mm-hmm. bloodborne does a great job of that yeah we're like uh bloodborne you know the weapons mm-hmm. aren't like just use this usually like there are bosses that are sometimes kind of uh weak to slashing damage or weak to assert like arcane damage or something like that mm-hmm. but it's not like oh you fucking idiot you chose the the threaded cane mm-hmm. in the beginning like they made a really like a, a big effort in that game to make everything viable yeah you know, that you can get and like you didn't get a weapon in that game where it's like this is the joke shitty weapon mm-hmm. or even like something like the Tonitris, which is like easy mode for the middle quarter of the game or so. Yeah, uh, is not something that carries you the whole game. Right. There isn't just the like, hey, do this, you win <laughs> kind of thing to it. Like a lot of things are viable uh, and that's it's a it's an element of polish, I feel like, Yeah. you know, to do that. Um, and that's, you know, something that this kind of misses Yeah. the mark on. Uh, in a way that I found like ultimately really frustrating and moving on to you know the last area I think that we're probably gonna have time to cover yeah yeah uh, today we're gonna do the Myra Central quick um, the fact that for this next stretch the boss is being so easy is another <laughs> one of those things that like is kind of a problem yeah you know it's a problem that like the game becomes a joke for a long stretch uh, like an uneven difficulty curve is another kind of issue right you know yeah like the like the the last third of your game shouldn't be this easy slide. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's very, you know, that's something I've been noticing a lot in games and it's not, uh, you know, you're just better at it. It's just, these bosses are just much easier. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, so the, the main thing is you, you, you know, this hollowed husk or what have you, you get the spiked key, which opens up this door to the mire of stench. Yes. Here's um, blight town. Yeah. Here's our actual blight town. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a poison swamp. Yes. Um, this is not very frustrating. I actually like this level um, mm-hmm. a, a, a good deal. It's uh, the right amount of trappy, I think. Um, you know, the, the, the consequence for falling isn't usually death. It is just, you know, getting poisoned and then getting out. Like, being in the swamp is not that big of a deal. Um, and this is them leaning into, again, just what this game is going to become later on, which is like, hey, let's, let, let's throw like platforming challenges at you. Um, yeah. and a lot of the combat kind of takes a back seat. Yep, yep. Um, there's the kind of uh, duck down on the uh, insane, you know, increase in enemy variety as well. Mm-hmm. 
here like we bring back some enemies that we've seen it's not uh, as dense with like learning new shit as the the hacker's tavern cavern was hacker's tavern i'm way more into than hacker Hager's yeah well ta- they've got two tavern. for one apps after 11 p.m which i think is a great deal the apps are hollowed out and controlled by a small doll from within well, I mean, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's the price you pay you know it. it's not i mean it's two for one you're not you, you can't expect it to be the ritz exactly. carlton you know yeah, it, it's it's like a, a little Caesar's pizza. <laughs> like you get two of them. What are you complaining about? Um, it doesn't matter that it tastes like you know, I don't know, doughy cheese. <laughs> you just described pizza. <laughs> but it tastes like it. Pizza yeah. is a transformative yeah. effect. Yeah, pizza is a transformative effect. Pizza's good. Yes, um, but <laughs> I, I forget what you were going to say. So it's not the huge variety of uh, of Hager's yeah, Cavern, which um, which works in its favor. Like yeah. It introduces a few new enemies. It does a couple new things with old enemies, but it doesn't just slam you with here's a thousand new things to memorize. Yeah. Like yeah. the only thing that adds is like rapid fire turret traps. Yeah. 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 But like, you know, the lower portion is, you know, you trying to, you know, not fall into the into this poison swamp. And even that, like, you know, there's a small little section you can get to where you can get a ring of vines, which will raise your poison resist and trivial trivialize an already pretty trivial boss. Yeah. You know. Which uh, which you head up to, you know, you kind of make your way through. There are a lot of uh, shafts that you have to do the um, your your wall jump mm-hmm. to to climb up here, um, which can be like if you miss that jump at the end, you can take a long fall and do a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, to yourself, which is kind of a pain. Like the actual one of those that leads up to the boss. It's a little it's be, a little much because it has that little section cut out in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it can be pretty tricky. Yeah, um, but you get up there in order to get to the boss, the stench most foul. Yes, that stench um, most foul. That stench most foul. I think that yes. I, I think that article uh, matters. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, this thing looks fucking crazy. Uh, it is goofy and out of place. Uh, memorable, I, but goofy and out of place. It looks like a Monty Python. Yeah. Thing to me, like it looks like a Monty Python, like a Terry uh, Gilliam collection. transition. Yeah. Or, or like the Beatles would fight this in Yellow Submarine. <laughs> it's you a know? creature of mouths. It's like a, it's yes. like a flying cloud with like mouth balls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it is so easy. <laughs> uh, this thing, this thing melts. Yep. <laughs> like its primary attack is to fart. Um, and yep. it will occasionally very slowly shoot its mouths at you. Yeah. Which yeah. are these stench, stench pods <laughs> is what they're called. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a weird move for Keurig to take. <laughs> yeah. The stench pod. Yeah. And he just pierces it and <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. percolate some shit in your house. Like some, some bad smell. Yeah. Um, and then you can yeah. ruin the environment with it. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's, a. Uh, He's not too. He's not too hard. You know, he's he's pretty easy. Just floats around you know, languidly. And, yeah, he's he's real chill. Yeah. Like, and even the second phase, I think he makes more of those little buds, but he doesn't do very much other yeah. than that. One of these is fine. Like as a breather after the literal gauntlet of shit that we went through. Yeah. Um, it's not 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 this level. It is a gauntlet of shit, but it is not the gauntlet of shit that is you know the previous three very difficult places. Um, yeah. a, a lot more of this is a little bit too much. Yeah, just the fact that we're not going to have a tough boss for a while. I understand that we are beating that we are being Goldilocks here. We are being impossible to please. Well, I I don't think I don't think we are when it's something that's so fundamental to games, right? Yeah. Like games get harder as you go through. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is left over from a more like non-linear approach. Yeah. You know, where maybe like some of those bosses that were mandatory that we had to fight here, maybe the Tree of Men is meant to be like a meat wall to stop us from getting to a layer. Like maybe some things got moved around. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't know, like, again, game de- game design, and game development is very really complicated, but yeah, yeah. it is it is a very weird that kind of like rising arc of difficulty is just classic. Yeah. You know, like there's a, it doesn't need to be advocated for because it's just kind of how games work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. A couple of NPCs um, here uh, right after the uh, that, that, that stench of most foul. Uh, the, there's this guy, the blood brow hunter, who gives you the red the red shift brand, which is. Uh, a brand that will let you pass through these uh, red walls of light that you maybe have seen blocking off certain areas, like in the Red Hall of Cages. Uh, you have to have your torch out to make this work, which is never explained. Um, it, it, and this is this is the non-fun side of Metroidvania, where yes. it's like not a new verb or movement set. It is just a key. Yeah, there are a couple of places where like this has worked into like platforming challenges, especially with, um, you know, um, being able to pass through certain things on a jump. But yeah, yeah. And then not, you know, mm-hmm. like if you don't, if you don't have your torch out, it will be a solid thing to stand on. Yeah. So yeah. they do some kind of neat stuff with it, but I wish that you, you know, the, they had to make it something you could toggle so they could do that with it. But it just ends up because I don't usually have a torch equipped. Right. Um, you know, there are a couple areas that require it, but not that many. 
So it ended up getting, I had to fit all my inventory yeah. to. I mean, it's, it's mapped to your D-pad, so you can just press down and go yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also a, a poison merchant that you can get to, um, Alda Griggs, but there's not too much about him. And then, so we're at, we're at the east or the westmost portion of the map at this point. Like, you know, we're down below our, um, you know, our initial landing spot. Um, and there's this small area that I don't understand why it's an area, the Fort Beyond the Mire. It just exists so you can fight a horse, I think. <laughs> Those horse things are pretty rough. Yeah, a little um, bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, this gets you to a boatman who will take you back around to the other side of the island. And that is where we're going to leave this, I think. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, run it, run out of time. I've got a doctor's appointment. Yeah. So, um, but that's a that's a, a good amount of of content for this. We'll wrap everything up <laughs> in the next episode. Um, it is, and I don't know when exactly we're going to record. It may very well be too late. Yes. For you to send in your responses. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, do we, apologize for that. Um, we, we will put out. Uh, we we will we will have put out a final call. So, you know, just in the future, understand that if you look at our social media, that is a, that, that is a place to learn about those deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we appreciate uh, you taking the salty journey with us. <laughs> um, the uh, And this is as salty as I think it gets. Yeah. Like, there's a couple. You know, there's an optional boss near the end that I think is real shit. Um, the, the three, the three on one fight. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of problems with that fight. Yeah. Um, and then there's a big dragon thing that will knock you off the screen. Yep. Or trap you in the corner. I think that's bad too. Yeah. But for the most part, it's pretty smooth sailing from here on out, you know. Yes. So uh, if you if you don't like the the vile or the bile part, mm-hmm. uh, less bile in the future. Yep, we're through it. Um, yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you like the show, you can support us on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash duckfeed TV, mm-hmm. um, even a little bit of money, you know, helps. Whatever you're able to spare a month. Yeah. Um, think of those things in terms of a year. So it's like, yeah. you know, you listen to the show every every week, um, and you give us twelve bucks a year, twenty four dollars a year. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's, you know, just again, I understand people can't afford that kind of thing, but just know that even something that seems very modest like that uh, actually does make a big difference. It really does. Uh, there are people who have done that that we uh, that we want to thank. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have an upside, I'd like to thank Emily Bracken, longtime fan. Um, yeah, I love just, Emily Bracken. Uh, yeah, just a just yeah. a great stand up member of the community. And uh, you mentioned this before. This is the person who broke the uh, the doll in Bloodborne having the same clothing as the Winter Lanterns. Oh, yeah. That scoop was broken by yep. Emily Bracken. So if you. <laughs> Are interested in that lore bit? You have her to thank. Yes. Um, also, Timothy Long. Thank you, Tim. Yep. Really do appreciate it. Uh, another Tim here, Tim Steele. Rich oh, and Tim. Oh, I wonder if they know each other. Tim's v. Brian. <laughs> Ballistic. <laughs> Tim's <laughs> versus Brian's. <laughs> Tim versus. Um, uh, Evan Noggle. Yep. Thank you very much, Evan Noggle. Thank really you. do appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, David Petrucco. Yeah. Uh, who has also been around for a very long time. Yeah. I interact with David all the time on uh, Twitter. Yeah. So. So we really appreciate it. Um, there are other things you can do. Listen to other shows on the network. Uh, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash bonfireside chat and just continue sticking around. And thank you for uh, weathering this weird off season with us. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see you until next time. What do they do until next time? Cool. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I just I just drew a curve in the air like this is how your difficulty should go. Um <laughs> Yeah, but that felt a little a, bit uh, catty in a way that I don't entirely feel like owning. So yeah, like uh, you know, get your difficulty straight. Yeah, um, I, I would say like don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of the things I'm thinking of are catty. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a catty episode. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's uh, so in in positive. Uh, until next time, you should uh, donate to the ACLU. Okay, there we go. Umbasa. Umbasa. <laughs> the, the official slogan of the ACLU. <laughs> Umbasa. Yeah. <laughs> we bought them out. And we all pray that we will have far more soon.